Prime rib is really one of the finest cuts of beef out there, so I wanted to share a method with you that's easy to replicate, but that will achieve a spectacular result time and time again if you just stick to the process. Of course, we'll be working with beefcake in part because I don't want you doing a bunch of herb bundles and measuring a whole bunch of spices. This is perfectly formulated to pair with this particular cut. Let's go. If you're doing this around the holidays, there's obviously a thousand things going on. So I want this to be straightforward and easy. So I'm going with a prime rib roast, boneless. You can do the bones, they're pretty, but it's more work. Now we dry brine, a critical step with a hunk of meat like this. I'm using cherry smoked salt that I've made. See previous videos if you want to learn how to do that. Otherwise, you can just use kosher salt. Spray it with some oil, apply the salt. Classic setup here for the fridge, baking sheet, tin foil rack. The more time you can allow, the better. It's a giant hunk of meat. Time is distance when brining, so allow this to get to the center by giving it as much as two full days. A day and you're fine. For the exterior paste, I'm working with a five pound roast here, so adjust any ratios accordingly if your meat is a different size. But I've got two sticks of unsalted cherry smoked butter that I've made. See previous videos if you want to learn how to do that. Most importantly, two sticks of butter if you don't, slightly softened with half a cup of beef cake. Do not try to do this with a whisk. I learned that lesson. You gotta be willing to get your hands in here and get dirty. Play in the sandbox, mix this thoroughly until all the rub is incorporated into the butter. Place the meat in a roasting pan and then begin to coat all sides of the meat with this paste. Leave no meat exposed. I prefer this elevated setup where the meat is up above the roasting pan so all the drippings can go back down into the pan so I don't create a hot mess inside my grill. Most important thing here is smoke is hitting all sides of the meat. I intentionally did not tell you a specific temperature to have your smoker at. I did mine at 180 because I had more time and I wanted a deeper, darker crust. A lot of people do it at 225. The important thing is to, to remove the meat at 115 degrees internal temperature. It's the time you take it out that matters most. Here's mine as it's reached 115 internal, time to pull it off the smoker. For the searing stage, you can do this inside your grill if you've got sear plates. I didn't want to wait for it to get up to temperature, so I go with a cast iron pan on my stove top few tablespoons of cooking oil, get this thing searing hot. 60 seconds of the four main surfaces, top and bottom, left and right, will give you a perfect crust and an internal temperature of 125 degrees. That's perfectly rare to medium rare. It's a beaut, Clark. But unfortunately, now we gotta let it rest for 30 minutes. Super sharp carving knife here. Should go through this bark and meat like absolute butter if you did it right. We nailed the color, we nailed the tenderness, nailed the juiciness. Slice this end to end for plating and serve with a horseradish cream sauce of your choice. Good Lord, we did it. Cherry smoked and seared beefcake prime rib, a masterpiece. You've got to try this one.